Well done. To the April 11th meeting of the Town Rotary. And uh, glad to see so many faces here today and so many, uh, and some on Zoom also. So, first, please join me in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, the National Anthem, and repeating the four way test. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. We think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Is it fair to all concerned? Good question. Beneficial to all concerned. Thank you. And now, Kim Edwards will give us the Please bow your heads. Father of peace, we pray that you preside over this rotary meeting. We thank you for each and everyone who is here and on Zoom today. You have blessed us with supportive people who seek the welfare of your people. Help us to work as a whole. Even if we have different opinions, give us unity of spirit. Teach us to each listen as others share their points of view. Help us to work as a unified team, combining ideas and good intentions for a great future. May we also have a spirit of camaraderie and fellowship, and not only in this room, but throughout the world, as we work together on creating peace for all. Amen. Thank you so much, Tim. Uh, Joni, would you like to media past president, Joni, introduce our visiting Rotarian people? Sure. <laughs> our um, visiting guests today are Jean West, who is um, up on the Zoom and Rudy Angelora, who's also on the Zoom. Welcome. Thank you. Yes, welcome. So our management today, uh, we're terribly your reporter on Zoom. As always, we give big thanks to the communication committee. So Ruth, we can't hear you. We can't hear it all. So um, it's actually a more of an event, and um, an evening meeting instead of doing a daytime meeting. We're going to do it on Monday, May 16th. It will be at Celeron Harbor Hotel, 4.30 to 
no cost to you to enjoy a meeting, but you can buy food and drink and meet, uh, meet with fellow Rotarians. So we look forward to seeing everybody on a Monday evening. Hopefully the weather will be nice. We can look at the lake and truly enjoy it. So. So I wanted to update this. Ruth, 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 we cannot hear you. Oh. I'm, I'm told we can. We could hear the other speakers. So maybe perhaps you're not just not in front of the mic. I am more in front of the mic. Oh, I right can now we can hear you. OK. Hear you All right. Thank you. I was told Perfect. by the Zoom folks they can't hear me, but I'm trying to speak into that mic, but evidently it's my computer mic that's working right now. So. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so John Healy and I met with uh, Faith Graham and Kathy Penavanko at the uh, Jamestown High School on Monday and they're putting together a press release about how they're using the earbuds that we donated to the high school to help with the translation for uh, the, the students. So uh, we we'll look forward to, to seeing that press release and also getting more information from the, um, the school as, as they learn what works with those, those uh, buds. So the vision committee would also uh, want to remind you that we have proposed matching donations that any Rotarian makes to the disaster relief fund up to a total of $500. And it will go to the, um, it will go to um, disaster relief for Ukraine through April 30th. And the Rotary districts can apply for expedited disaster response grants uh, to provide relief for refugees or other victims of the war in Ukraine, including items such as food, shelter, medicine, and clothing. These monies, like I just said, is go are going directly to Ukraine. So if you go on the website, I left, uh, I put an announcement on every table. If you go to the website and make a donation, if you will then uh, send that proof to, to me and, and the uh, um, the vision committee is recommending that we match up to $500. So some of you have already done that and thank you. And uh, hopefully more will also do that. I would like to know by April 25th about your donations because then we have to make the donation to the, uh, to the, the relief fund by April 30th to match. Please, please, we are looking for host families for the exchange students for next year. Um, I know it seems a long way off, but if we can't find host families, probably by around April 30th, we may have to cancel our outgoing student because Josie Mason has already been selected uh, to, to enter into that process. But because of the stipulation that we have to accept an exchange student if we, to send one, um, we really need to, to get our host families lined up. So please think about it. We're trying primarily in the Southwestern School District, but also uh, po possibly Maple Grove. So does anyone else have any additional announcements? Diana McLee. This is um, actually going to be a request. Um, could I have a show of hands of how many people have read to students over the years in the school system in any any year okay just about everybody here um this year there is something special going on um with the elementary schools in jamestown high in the jamestown public school system they're having a one district one read um during the parp three weeks of parp this year um, PARP stands for Parents as Reading Partners. And we've always, we've participated in that for a number of years now. Chris Anderson's wife, Amy, is kind of the person that we connect with to do that. Um, but anyway, this year, the, the book that they're all going to be reading is Wish Tree. And so they're going to be reading this book. It's close to 200 pages um, over the three-week period starting in May. And we'll have a sign up for readers again. 
But my request today is they are looking at Bush School for 300 seedlings. They were gonna, they're gonna collect their milk cartons. They've got dirt donated from Mike's nursery, but they need seedlings for all the children to plant and then take home to grow. So if anybody um, has any ideas of where they might be able to get those, let me know. Cause I said that I would put the word out to see if we had any contacts that could help with that process. So just little seedlings that can be grown in a milk carton. Let me know, okay, thank you. So preferably a tree seedling, but that would also take. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now please get your tickets ready and let's welcome Dewey Jones with the 50-50 drawing. Well, I probably just need to step over by South Jeff. Yeah. Just get it done with. Okay. So can I get you to pull the number out of there? Okay, to the winner goes thirty-one dollars. Last three is two two zero. There it is. Let's get back on vacation. I already won. Sue Jones won it. Very good. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Dewey. So, Sergeant at Arms. Do we have a Sergeant at Arms today? Oh, there, there he is, Lee. Welcome. Lee, you need to know. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. Both of you guys, good to see you. And I like the growth. <laughs> yeah, I think I can actually figure that one out too. <laughs> I figured that out. <laughs> well, uh, there was an important sporting event this weekend. And anybody know what that was? The Masters, one of my all time favorite sporting events of the entire year. And uh, so I have some trivia I'd like to throw at you. Who is the golfer that has won the most Masters in history? By the way, that's six of them. Somebody said Nicholas. You're right. It's Jack Nicholas. Tiger Woods is just one behind. He's won five, five times. He's been around a lot longer than we realize. <laughs> and he had quite the struggle uh, this tournament to get through after uh, probably playing too soon after car after the car accident. Anybody know what his final score was? Oh, plus six, that would be generous. <laughs> he, had a, he had a score of 301. And so when you look at 288 as par, that's north. He was a lot over. So nobody, okay, you guys who guessed, come on, dollar.
how many uh, watched the whole tournament? And uh, thank you. Thank you all for your donations. Uh, I was deeply touched by uh, the courage that, that Tiger showed and his ability to sustain the pain and continue to perform. Uh, even though it was a disaster on Sunday, he didn't stop. Thank you. Um, who won the tournament? Hey, Scotty Scheffler. And uh, what was his score? Minus 12. Which was two less than what he was looking forward to doing until the last hole. Yes. Minus 10. Dollar. Thank you, Russ. I thought it was 12 too. Yeah. Until the last hole. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate the donation. How many people in this room know the answer to this question? Who's been in the paper more than anybody in, in the membership over the last month? What? Tori? Tori? No. <laughs> Andy has. And we're so glad to have you here today. Good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I, uh, <laughs> I just have to say this as, as in my own personal um, comment, but uh, Andy, I, I'm just proud that you're a member of the club and I'm proud of the job you do and the way you present yourself. I think uh, there's... <laughs> <laughs> you doing me? <laughs> and I just happened to have a two dollar bill. <laughs> so that's my contribution. <clears throat> and uh, in in this day and age, um, there's way too much uh, bickering and infighting that goes on. And uh, it's nice to know that. Uh, Andy's membership in the club, at least to some extent, and his background has made him such a, a wonderful representative. So we thank you, Andy. Yes. Now you won't come back for another couple of months. <laughs> Anybody have an idea of, of this last final four? have an idea as to who has won the most national championships in basketball college. Yes. Mm, not quite. Oh, well there, she's right. Did you hear that? UConn women. And there's no contest there. <laughs> they just roll over everybody. Anybody have a question they'd like to throw out there for someone? How many people are ready for highway cleanup? Russ, I'm thinking that uh, we're close to being in good weather and maybe the highway banks will be dry enough. We're gonna go sometime early May, more on that next week. Okay, thank you all. Oh, happy. Yes, happy buck That's fine. Right yep, yeah, come on up with your happy bucks. Here's a happy buck for one of our.
and not a member of the Trinity. This is the 11th birthday of St. Daniel's Church. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And um, so that sort of makes it my 11th birthday, too. And in case too, I said I would do my best to embarrass her a little bit. So here's the best reading count. It says so right there. And don't forget. Happy Trinity. <laughs> I'll piggyback on that. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you, everyone. Um, Joni, this book is for you. She's one of our writers, Walt, our editor, and Vicki just left. And this is for the rest of the club for being so supportive to the Jamestown Gazette. Thank you. I've got uh, two that I wanted to do today. So last week I would have mentioned, uh, I had the opportunity to go to the premiere of the Mother's Day film at the Reg. I don't know if anybody made it, but uh, the director, Travis Carlson was a very close friend of mine growing up. So it was awesome to see uh, a good friend, you know, doing great things. And then the other one, uh, Thank you to our state representatives, Mr. Goodell and Mr. Borello, who participated on Friday in the Chamber of Commerce legislative breakfast. It was touch and go all week as to how we were going to put this on and if they would even be available. But in the end, the stars aligned, I guess you could say, and we had a great event. And I think everyone there enjoyed it. So we thank you all. Many people ask how mission trip to Mexico went for Sue and I, and it was delightful. And my one happy buck today is for the bartenders at the pools because they still make the best frozen margaritas with salt ever. <laughs> well, it was well timed. Uh, my happy buck was to welcome Sue and uh, her bearded hubby back um, from their mission trip. And we're glad you made it back safely. And my other happy bucks are for the return of the Banff Film Festival. It was wonderful to see Jamestown teaming with people uh, last Tuesday night and um, great films. Never attended. Uh, look for that next year. So great. I have a happy buck for uh, one of my past uh, um, places of uh, fun and enjoyment, the Stock Lake Watershed Management Alliance. There's a great article in the paper today. And uh, all you have to do is read that and see how far we have come uh, to support Chautauqua Lake and the, uh, the number of partners growing both local and uh, out of our area and just doing great things for uh, Chautauqua Lake. It's under great leadership uh, with Randall Perry and a great board. So uh, it's for the lake. And I have money, $25, for our son and daughter-in-law who got us to Buffalo. And we took them out to dinner and the restaurant caught on fire. And we had no heat in the hotel, but we stayed there because we knew we were going away. And then money for our dear friends, uh, Vincent and Barb, who picked us up. And they had a very busy Saturday and still took time out of their schedule to come and get us and bring us back. And to the doctor who said, Greg's other leg is okay and we don't have to have surgery on that one. Thank God. <laughs> well, I do see we have one more happy book. But I do see that uh, we do have a comment from uh, in the chat that the Chautauqua County Soil and Water has donated seedlings in the past. So we will follow up. Uh, the she loves our paper. Last week she pulled up in front of our house and asked for one. Um, and she does donate $5 to the pool. Right. right. Very good. Glad we got a lot of very happy people today. So um, at this point, I would like to, it's my pleasure to welcome Joni Blackman back up here to introduce our speaker for today. 
Well, we have some tag team speakers today. Amanda Gessing is here uh, from the YWCA. She's the executive director, has been in the job about a year, and um, she's really taken the YWCA's mission of uh, racial justice to um, a, a new point, let's put it that way. And so she has a team that uh, helps teach about uh, DEI and, and, and social justice. And so today we're gonna to hear from Alizé Scott, who is their social justice point person, right? Uh, but Amanda's gonna come up and talk about the whole umbrella of it all, because there's a lot to it and I wouldn't even begin to do it justice. Hi, I'm Amanda Giesing. Um Thank you for having us here today. I just want to tell you a little bit about the YWCA Jamestown. We're dedicated to um, eliminating racism and empowering women, ensuring peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for everyone. Um, it's quite a large mission, I'm not gonna lie. Um, sometimes I think I'm the crazy person that decided to take on uh, a leadership role of a nonprofit during a pandemic. Um, sometimes I think I should have been committed for that, but I have a fantastic team of individuals at Thumbnar organization um, that have really made the last year and a half um, phenomenal, and I really can't wait to see where we go moving forward. Uh, if you're not familiar with the YWCA Jamestown, we have several programs that help us empower women, whether it's our child care program that enables women to work, um, our summer learning program and our after school programs would also provide child care so women are able to continue to work uh, without having to worry about where their children are during the day. We have a transitional supportive housing program that uh, provides um, transitional supportive housing for women who are in need of it because they're either homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. Uh, we have a women to women coaching program where we provide volunteers to coach women who are interested in uh, developing their career um, or their skill sets so that they can further their career. We have a comprehensive adolescent um, pregnancy prevention education program, um, CAP with two Ps. And what that program does is it pushes into schools. And our goal there is to empower students to understand um, their own sexual health um, and the decisions that they can make around that sexual health. And we have um, several other programs that we are able to offer to the community. Uh, one of our new ones that we're really excited about is a um, women's workforce empowerment program where we're going to be uh, having educational sessions throughout Jamestown and Chautauqua County, uh, educating women on their workers' rights so that they understand uh, a lot of the new laws related to unemployment and overtime, um, time off, those kinds of things. Um, that is a new grant from the Department of Labor, so we're excited about that. Uh, but what I'm here to talk to you about today and what I'm most excited about is our social justice and race equity program. Uh, it has long been part of our mission, um, but the last year we've worked hard to make sure that we're not only living that mission inside, but now we have a director who's helped us eight to able to help us live that mission on the outside as well. So um, with the mission and the vision of the YWC Jamestown, we are uniquely positioned to spearhead the growth and diversity and equity awareness and support individuals in understanding the need to be an inclusive community. Um, as we move forward in our efforts, our goal is to develop and maintain educational and outreach programs, community awareness events, and opportunities for community dialogue focused on social justice issues affecting not only Jamestown and Chautauqua County, but issues and concerns that are affecting marginalized communities throughout New York State and beyond. So far, we've had the opportunity to provide DEI training to various organizations, to implement book readings and discussions to both children and adults in the area, continue our participation in the Stand Against Racism Challenge, provide presentations on important issues affecting marginalized groups, and much more. We're excited for where this work takes us, and we as we collaborate with other organizations, as we continue to do the work until the world sees women, girls, and people of color the way we do, equal, powerful, and unstoppable. And I'm here right now to introduce you to Alizé Scott, who's our director of our social justice and race equity program. Um, Alizé was an internal candidate. Um, the moment I met her, I knew I wanted her um, to take a leadership role, and she made it very clear that she wanted to do that as well. Um, Alizé has her master's in history, concentration of American American studies, but I think I messed it up. So if I did, she can correct me. Um, but Alizé uh, teaches part-time at Jamestown Community College, as a, uh, teaches a class called the Black Experience at JCC. Uh, and she's a wealth of knowledge and is totally positioned to help us move our social justice and race equity program forward. And she's here today to talk to you a little bit about the program. Thank you, Amanda. I feel like it's not necessary for me to say anything now. 
My name is Alizé Scott. I'm the director of our um, Social Justice and Race Equity Program here at the YWCA. Um, as Amanda mentioned, this has been a long part of our mission. And recently, as we're reorganizing the office, we actually stumbled upon scrapbooks all the way back from the 90s. Um, and it shows just how much we were a part of this. And, you know, we kind of lost sight of it a little bit, but we are realizing that we want to come back full circle and really make sure that we are living up to our mission statement of eliminating racism and empowering women. So as Amanda mentioned, we do have some programs in the works already. Um, we have been offering DEI training, not only internally, but also externally to other organizations throughout the area. Um, so if any of your organizations or people that you know are looking for that, we offer that. And Indo is a great um, leader of that work. Um, she's not here with us today, but <laughs> she's the one that runs a lot of our DEI training and she does a phenomenal job. We also have reading programs that we have started. So we are currently doing a James Baldwin discussion. This is for adults in the area. Um, our last one is actually this Thursday. Um, and we also have a reading program for children. So this is called um, Bookmark um, with the mark standing for motivating aspiring readers through kindness. So what this program really does is introduce children to age appropriate books about various cultures, racial identities, ethnicities, to let them know that everybody's different, but it's important that we're celebrating those differences. Um, so we really introduce them to a wealth of different cultures for them to really be aware of all the different communities that they'll probably come into contact with as they grow up. Um, so that is a program that we recently started in our after school programs and that we're looking to expand within our library systems as well as public schools all throughout the county. Um, and then we also do educational seminars. So we go and we talk to different organizations who invite us on various topics. Um, I recently spoke at a church about representation and what race representation looks like. So again, our program is very new, but we are making sure that we are fulfilling our mission and providing the community with everything that we need in order to be a inclusive community that we all aspire to be. Thank you. <laughs> so any questions from the audience? Why don't you both come up here so we can. She covered it. They, they covered it so well. Diana. So Diana, I'm going to repeat the question. For, so Diana asked about the uh, reading program and to get more details. I can say it. <laughs> Okay, so for our adult reading program, recently we've been holding them over Zoom. Um, so you just go right onto our website, ywcajamestown.com forward slash events, and you can register for our upcoming discussions. Um, again, this one is on James Baldwin's essays and collections. Um, so that is what we are doing currently. Um, and then we also have a book reading that we are going to be partnering with Chautauqua Institute on that will be coming out in May, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, yeah, on the book cast by Isabella Wilkinson. Um, so that will also be available for registration pretty soon. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the registration for the book reads with the Chautauqua Institution will be opening up hopefully next week. Uh, we're a little bit behind timeline. Coordinating two large organizations has proven to be a little bit more longer than we thought it would be. Uh, but we have several different locations throughout Chautauqua County, including Zoom opportunities uh, for individuals to read the book and then gather together in groups of 15 to 25 uh, with a trained facilitator there to help you facilitate those ongoing conversations about the book. Um, so if you want to read the book and kind of get a head start, it is a thick book. There's a lot of great information in it, but uh, we're hopefully announcing it next week or later this week. And then the book reads will be the week of the 25th. So, yeah, so the reading program for the children currently, I am the facilitator for that. Um, so, again, I just go into the after school programs, read to the kids, um, ask them questions that are age appropriate based on whatever book that we read, and always give them a background beforehand when we, before we read the book as well. Um, so, again, right now it's just me, but as we expand the program, we are looking to open it up to volunteers in the community to help us to make sure that we're reaching all the schools across Chautauqua County.
The two year program, Amanda, reaches out to the north edge of the county, the Dunkirk area. Do you have recruiters up there, or you know, how does that get covered? Absolutely. So, yeah. So the question was how, um, how much do we need to reach the North County? Uh, with the book read program, we're actually doing both. So they're at one of the um, reading locations is going to be the Westfield YWCA, and we're starting to build some additional relationships with them as well. Um, some of our programs, like our supervised visitation uh, and transitional housing, those programs are for anyone in the county or area who need those services. So we have quite a few individuals who participate in our supervised visitation program who are from um, the North County. And we've had individuals in our transitional housing program from all over um, Northwestern New York. So um, we, our, cap, our comprehensive adolescent pregnancy prevention is the only high school educational piece outside of school districts. And so um, that's an outside agency pushing in. And we go to Westfield, um, Fredonia, Dunkirk, all the schools out there as well. Amy? Sorry, well. That you want to do. Okay. Uh, so, Amy mentioned the uh, YWCA day or the Isabel Wilkinson day. Isabel Wilkinson is coming to Chautauqua Institution and is actually going to be the Chautauqua day as well. Um, so, we do invite everyone to come to Chautauqua that day and meet Isabel in person as she does her morning lecture. Uh, there's going to be a full cast of things to do all day that day. And actually, the YWCA um, CEO is going to be there in the afternoon for an afternoon panel as well. So that's very exciting for us here in Jamestown. They have the DEI of the YWCA USA there. Uh, and as far as the DEI training goes, uh, DEI stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And what's great about our program and our training is we're able to customize it. Endo is well-versed and well-trained in um, facilitating these kind of conversations and trainings. And uh, so what she's able to do is meet with these individual organizations that would like some diversity, equity, and inclusion training and customize it to your needs. It can be anything from understanding the importance of to um, understanding biases and understanding um, how to overcome those biases to facilitating um, a working group to help your organization um, form a DEI committee or DEI statement within your organization. So uh, we do have more information on our website. You can always give me a call as well. And I'd be happy to give you the printout of the information um, and the training that end of the provide. Okay. Where can people like to when you ever say the point of the Yeah, no, I, uh, there's no question. I'm not sure my answer might be. I'm trying to think. The YMCA and the YWCA, we partner together in a lot of um, programs, primarily our youth programs with the summer learning program at LEAP uh, through the Jamestown Public Schools and our after school programs. We run a lot of those programs very parallel to each other and have strong partnerships with each other on those. Um, I don't think their mission and their mission has the eliminating racism piece. So I'm not sure what they have as far as uh, DEI offering. Um, but the, I know they offer housing and they do a lot of other um, programs in the community that aligns similar to ours or run parallel? Does that answer that? Okay. You mentioned um, training for women and leaders. Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, it is a brand new event that we just we just received. Are you talking about the coaching or the what's the readiness? Or the uh, understanding of the right? Yes. Oh, understand no, 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 no. Yeah. oh, you just wrote it? Okay. So, 
Our coaching program matches volunteers um, with the Women to Women coaching program. We manage that program. I don't know if anyone's been here that's talked to you guys about that program in the past. Um, I think Misty at one point was uh, the facilitator. Um, so what we do is we have volunteers who left to uh, meet with a um, participant about four times a month. And they're basically there to just be an extra source of encouragement and friendship as she um, develops her own personal goals that she would like to achieve. And that volunteer is able to just be that source of, um, when we think about when we've overcome hurdles and when we've achieved our own milestones in life, we've always had that individual um, who we can kind of lean on for support that had no secret agenda or no um, idea where they wanted us to go. They just wanted to be that support. And that's what that program basically is. It's providing women who maybe don't have the people in their life or could use some additional people in their lives to provide them with that support without having a, a, a certain agenda attached to it. Um, so we ask anyone in the community who would like to volunteer, uh, we try to match you up with somebody who could um, has somewhat similar interests or maybe wants to create uh, a career that's similar to yours or um, live in an area that's similar to yours so that you could have a reason to connect and uh, relate to this stuff. And then the workers' uh, rights is a brand new grant we really, we really just received. Uh, we're partnering with the Mental Health Association, the, mobile, um, the Jamestown Mobile Market, and a few other organizations to make sure that we're reaching um, the entire community and really making sure that they understand um, a lot of the changes that have happened. If you think about the changes with the time laws in particular, uh, a lot of people don't necessarily understand, or and not the overtime laws, but the paid time off that probably three hours of work. You get one hour of paid time sick leave off. Um, and so it's making sure that everybody understands those roles and what they're entitled to. Okay. We really appreciate that. It was very informative, and it's sort of um, the the women's uh, coaching sort of fits in with our speakers from last week with Invest You, and they were talking about how uh, they their investigators learn about um, opportunities that they didn't know exist, but also learn how to speak the other language that is required when you're looking, when you're, when you're trying to uh, uh, access uh, services that are available to you, but you don't really know how to talk about it. And so it sounds like this is very similar. So thank you very much for your presentation. Um, the Rotary internationally uh, works every, has been working for years to uh, wipe out polio in the world, in the in, in uh, populations and save the children from this uh, devastating disease. And in appreciation for your speaking with us this, uh, this afternoon, we will be making a donation to the Polio Plus effort that will uh, provide vaccinations for four children who will never have to face polio in their lives. So thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate everyone being here and uh, we are adjourned. Yeah,